let's just stick to this. A bit low, but I think it's just a low music here. So, uh, we're not gonna touch anything. Why would the air be so cold? Why would the air be so cold? Of flake and white as a sailor begs their pledge. To the ice they'll pray the leads reveals. Some charted course ahead. Of home they'll dream. Of warm long lost and chased to the frost world's edge. A hunger draws the desperate here. Is one that can't be fed. What will you do when steel hearts break and courage does not abscond? I lead his soul so help the gods. Out of the pale beyond. Crew wanted. Able bodied crew wanted for dangerous expedition. Months of darkness, low ages, slim chance of safe return. Uh, glory to be had in the events of success. You're alone in the office. The tea in your hand has long since gone cold. Uh, I'd rather coffee now. Nah, it's perfect. Looking, looking around the room, you can make out a collection of military books. One on the desk is a ship in a bottle. A metronome ticks away steadily. I find it rather calming. The dedicated rhythm soothes the senses. The room is uh, sweltering. They are stiff and stale. You hear footsteps climbing the stairs that brought you here. Remain standing. The door behind you swings open. The captain... The captain bounds past you. To the other side of the desk. Uh, do you have all your teeth? Uh, open man, uh, mouth. You bury your teeth to the man. Good. You can never be too careful. It's the little things uh, you can lose people to. I've not had scurvy before. Are you speaking from experience? I'll take that. I've not, have, uh, not had scurvy before, if that's what you're asking. There's more things to worry about than just scurvy. How many people have died under your supervision? More than I care to admit. Can you remember the faces? Uh, I'm ashamed to admit that they've faded. Hmm. Please, take a seat. The chair is uncomfortably large. The seat feels worn. I'm Captain Hunt. Uh, the pleasure is mine, Robin Shaw. The Captain nods. I hope you weren't waiting too long. Uh, 
I'm told it's worth the wait. Good. There's been a lot of candidates. Some good, some bad. Interesting mix. I'm sure you understand the need of discretion. Months of darkness, low wages, slim chance of safe return. That didn't deter you, did it? Quite the opposite, it's why I'm here. A thirst for adventure then, he winks. I'd keep that to yourself around the other sailors. They might drown you in it. I have a few questions first. He looks down at his list of questions. You were born a land lover or a sea were you born a land lover or a sea dog? Um Right, uh, let's see. Uh, city, we are born from the city or the ocean. Well, I may, I say I'm mixed. Uh, if I knew, I tell you, I've been all over. But I'm here now. Ah, uh, mutt wash. Plenty of those joining. Myself included. Military experience. Uh, colonial royal... Admirality. Uh, Royal Adm Admirality, two tours. A mutt wash from an, from the navy. I guess I'm not that I'm not that special these days. Under what circumstances did you leave? In one piece. You'll be surprised how many can't even say that. Have you ever fired a weapon? Yes. Have you ever killed a man? Directly or otherwise? No. You're not married, are you? Of course not. You better not have a death wish. One must believe the return... They'll return to justify leaving in the first place. Any less than you're doing yourself a disservice. We're here to find the ship in that bottle. Well, it's right here. We found it and it that's it. We did it. It's done. No, but really, we, uh, we we should probably hear him out. The Vice Count. Ever heard of it? Um, n n no, sir. Please enlighten me. <clears throat> Five years ago, she set sail on a research expedition towards the dead Pens peninsula. I butchered that, didn't I? They were trying to find and study the absolute magnetic south. Did they? Did they what? Did, did they find it? The magnetic south? I have no idea. She never came back. Her last known location were 200 miles south of land. Presume lost to the ice. Five years is a bit uh, late for a rescue operation. They're probably dead. Alive or not, the research is supposed, uh, supposedly of extreme importance. So it's not a rescue operation.
And we're supposed to be chasing that research? Exactly. All right. You have my attention. Here's what we do know. Not one person or thing has been heard from the Vice Count since it first left port. Until now. Until now. Someone was found who claims to have been on the ship. They're probably lying. Rumors attract fools, send them mad. If that's the case, then someone is putting a lot of money into chasing rumors. Those with more money than sense want uh, that old ship. That's the job. If I don't pick the first mate, somebody, el somebody else will and... Well... My yard of character has gotten me this far. All of our crew. Quite a mix. A work in progress. Some I've known for years. They get in on trust and experience. Others, well, they interview. Any impressed you? That remains to be seen. We do have transport though. We'll be traveling on board a Temperance. She's a beauty. Greenwood. Generational. Not many like it left these days. The Vice Count and the Temperance. They're sister ships. Built together. Set out into the world to die alone. Sent out, it says. Poetic. Indeed. I like to think one calls out for the other. The captain looks at the uh, bottled ship. But well, it didn't really, but okay. So what do you think? Uh, no, I don't think anyone is alive after five years. So, scratch that. In the cold? No. Uh, so sounds like you need all the help you can get. We will. The captain checks his watch. Anyway, I think I've heard enough. The captain stands up. We we'll leave in a month. Welcome aboard, Sean. Proverbially speaking. So I have the job? What do you think? I'll see you on the temperance. I've got a good feeling about your show. Thank you, Captain. The Captain makes his uh, way to the door and you follow. You arrive at the docks a month to the day. Before you lies a ship. The letters on the side spelling temperance. Approach. You walk the cobble to the boarding ramp. Beside is a sharply dressed man. Overseeing the loading of cargo. He turns to you with a stern expression. You can feel his eyes assessing you. A military gate. You must be Hans Pig for first mate. I figured he'd keep, uh, he'd keep it in the ranks. Good man. He sends an arm. Uh, Richard Templeton. A pleasure. 
you accept his offer of a handshake? It is a considerable shake. It's a considered shake, I think it said. I shall be operating the chief science officer of Lin on this expedition. I'm also the incumbent representative of our benefactor. Do, however, consider myself and my team at you and the captain's disposal. What did you specialize in? Uh, apply the botany. Uh, not much use for a botany is on the ice, is there? Templeton glares at you. I assure you, I am well equipped in all matters scientific. No doubt, I need to inform you of your duties. You are second only to Captain Hunt himself. Though I must warn you that you got quite a task ahead. The rabbi you spent the afternoon sorting are the same that you will have to whip into shape. Punctuality, schedule, a strict adherence, adherence is what we need if this expedition is to succeed. I expect you to be the organized sort. You would not have, uh, you would not have been assigned the role otherwise. I have more than enough experience with a crew of this nature. That is comforting to hear. It would seem for most uh, of the crew, the captain favored personal history over expertise. It is good to know he found a capable sword for such a vital role. Let me know when you're ready to depart. The less valuable time we waste here, the better. Uh, well, let's see. The city... You'll be gone for quite a while. It'll be some time before you see the city again. A young man stands at the ramp, stealing himself for the journey ahead. Hesis hesitantly, he begins to drag his feet off the ramp and onto the ship. Huh. Hunt's description of the ship was accurate, and here identical to the device count, barring some uh, modern additions. Well, let's set sail. Now, I was lucky to actually get to play this demo. It was only during the weekend, but I haven't it, had it installed still. You can download it right now. See, it's been a month. It's been one month since I signed on, since I signed on, and one week since we set sail aboard the Temperance. I'm told the waters will get warmer as we pass through. The past the hemisphere before they turn colder. Who's paying for this? I can't help but wonder who's who's footing the bill for all this. Certainly not the captain. It's none of my business. It's none of my business really, but the question still lingers in my mind. Captain Hunt is mostly kept uh, to his quarters so far. The captain seems trustworthy, seems a trustworthy sort. Experience alone justifies his position. There aren't many who makes out the other end of the navy military service with all their limbs, let alone its vigor. I can't shake the feeling he's not telling the whole truth. I do find myself warming to the man. The Admiralty had nothing like this. A technical marvel. Elegant machinery. 
expertly weaved through one of the fastest hardwood ships of its days. Reborn from this mission. For this, reborn for this mission. Breathing again with life. She is simply magnificent. As for the rest of the crew. There are now 22 of us. Including the captain. Our next port will be our last before we enter the ice. To pick up the remaining four members of the crew. The scouting team. Hunt is also keen to work out a deal on a pack of uh, sledding dogs. The crew is a strange lot. Eclectic. Oh no, this is gonna be hard. Eclectic as the ship itself. I did it. Nice. Let's go. Uh, one of Hunt's sailors approaches. Uh, captain wants you at the helm. I'll head there now. He leaves. Uh, the crowd's nest currently stands unoccupied. The scouting team are expected to join at the next port. Uh, forecastle? The forecastle door appears to be locked. Hmm. Uh, the door to Captain to Hunt's cabin is uh, shut tight. The captain himself is busy at the helm. You ascend the stairs to the stern and find the old captain manning the helm of the ship. Ah, Robin, lovely day, lovely day for it, isn't it? It is indeed, Captain. Indeed. It's day like this. Uh, I make sure to do my share of the sailing. He wings. Why? Can't afford to go rusty in my old age. Never know when you're going to have to get your hands dirty. He thinks for a moment before stepping aside, stretching out a wrinkled hand. Did you ever take the helm in the Admiralty? Here. Why don't you have a try? Let's take the wheel. You grip the wheel of the ship and feel the weight of the waves in your arms. The memory in your muscle rear, rear themselves and begin to move in time with the ship and the wind. Easy. There you have it. I can pass you on the back. Fantastic. Now try to get the sense of where we are. Get some perspective. Soon. Peaceful, isn't it? Uh, panning and zoom speeds can be adjusted in the setting menu. Okay. Oh. It takes the wheel back from you. I think I'll drink the... I think I'll drink the morning in a little longer. Would you mind preparing my quarters for today's work? There is much to do. Sure, of course. Um, a tub. A pristine, a pristine furnished tub. Secure to the, to the floor. A luxury to be had on the ice. On the desk you make out a variety of papers, notes and maps. As well as a sealed letter with a stamp you don't recognize. The desk itself is uh, suspended with ro ropes to keep it safely in place. A classical painting deciphering uh, sailors doing battle with the Kraken. An, o an ode to an old folklore. Known to all Captain... Known to all Captain Seamus, or... Was it Hamish? Well, let's prepare it. You take a seat at the end of the room. The Captain joins you. Now, let's run through our expedi... No, let's run through our provisions. Before taking requests. To start. 
There's 23 souls signed on to this expedition, ourselves included. That's 16 free to be assigned to task, and the rest uh, deploy to their permanent stations. You are only able... Okay, this is... Um, Alright. Uh, you are only able to deploy crew who you have uh, discorded. Discord. They must be in good health and not otherwise deployed to another post. Alright. Uh, we'll be picking up uh, the scouting crew at the next port. A lot of us also seem to be in good spirits. The expedition will tear itself apart if uh, you end the week with no decorum left. We have not provisioned for at least six months in case of emergency. Uh, crew members will start to develop scurvy and be unable to work and be unable to work should you end the week with uh, no food left in the hoosh pot all right so i just need to keep them fed and more than enough fuel to uh, see us there and back again uh, you will all freeze to death if, if you end the week with no fuel in the furnace i think this is a um, uh, a bug, pretty sure. I mean, that's the food, isn't it? The, the, this is the fuel. The sledding dogs. Well, there are still a matter of uh, negotiation. Uh, dogs will be needed to send sledding teams out to gather resources on the ice. Now, on to work. Uh, what about uh, Corvid? A sailor enters. We found a stowaway in the lower holds. Bring them in. Another sailor enters, leading a young man by their side. You know, you're not the first stowaways I've had. The captain studies them further. You know where we are heading, don't you? I do, sir. The ice. Did you know that before you climb, uh, before you climbed inside that crate? I did, sir. How old are you? Hardly a. You're hardly a useful pair of hands. Not true. I can pull my weight, sir. Do you know your jibum from your bow spirit? I do, I learned it all from my dad. Your dad? His ward son followed me on board back in the city. What should we do with him, Captain? Hmm. Well, Shaw. Hans, uh, Hans, it's up to you. Your first mate. What should we do with him? He's not staying on board. But what do we do? Do we toss him overboard or what? Then we're writing a tight glove here. I'm not sure if we can fit, we can take another one. But who is Ward? I don't know who Ward is. This is not that's another sailor, isn't it? Uh, well, um, he is not staying on board. I? We could throw him overboard. <laughs> uh, ditch him when we make next port. We don't need more mouths to feed. Drop them off at our next stop. Lead them with enough money to catch a boat back to the city. I didn't think... Uh, I didn't think it uh, pertinent to bring any money to a frozen desert, did you? Let's hope the boy's father has enough to keep him going. The two sailors dragged the sailway boy back uh, below deck, take, uh, taking him to see his father in the crew's cabins. 
And what of the father? Should open off with the boy. Is his son? That's for him to decide. Very well. Hopefully he doesn't care for the run and I'm not down a sailor. Well, that matter sorted. Uh, have you agreed upon my conditions? Uh, to the point, eh? Sure. Uh, this is Lady Cordell. Cordell here is to provide us with the kennel for the hounds or for the sleds. And uh, our agreement was that you will train them up, uh, train them up while we part ways at the nearest island. But you neglected to inform me that you were bringing my dogs through the Pale Passage. I had no intention of sending the pack to its death. You seem to have good faith, have good faith in this expedition. It's one thing to ask for my whole kennel. It's another to drag them into their eyes to chase a myth. Never before has a buyer been so dishonest. And never before has a seller made such a strong demands. And what exactly are these demands? She demands we allow her to, co to come along on the expedition. As a member of the crew. None on this ship have experience and fam uh, familiarity with these dogs that I possess. If you're taking them into such a brutal location, then uh, they will need me to guide them if they have any chance of survival. The humans on board too, of course. Of course. You can see my dilemma, Shaw. Bringing another member of the crew is, is a risk. But our hands may be tied. Your thoughts? Uh, I don't see the harm in having an expert uh, on the sled dogs. I don't think we can find it on the buyer, so let's take her. A good point, Shaw. He, tur he turns to her. This deal is all ready to your benefit. Do you have anyone on board with extensive training in the management of ruling of dogs? Your sleds are useless if you can't control the dogs efficiently through enough to hold them. And I would like to ensure my dogs are treated properly. Welcome aboard, Cordell. Your knowledge should prove valuable. Invaluable. I'll have a room prepared for you. Below deck. No need. You'll find me in the forecastle with the dogs. She leaves. I hope not making a mistake, Shaw. Well, we have 14 available dogs now. And now that's, uh, that that's all settled. I have one more errand for you to run. Could you grab the Stoke uh, brothers and order them to meet uh, me up deck after dinner? Hefty lads, red hair, you couldn't mistake them for another. The Stoke brothers, who are they? You haven't met all the crew yet? The Stokes have been serving me for years. Help me down on the middle deck. In the meantime, you should grab a copy of the crew of crew manifest and get acquainted with more of the crew. Uh, yes, sir, I will. Somewhere. Where's the manifest? Uh, upon closer inspection, you make out the ship's uh, photographer Kasha Belford balanced uh, on the ship's mast with her camera, lining up a photo. Snapping a shot, she uh, clambers down, only noticing, noticing you on her landing. 
Oh, Officer Shaw. It's about time I met the first officer of this ship. Kasha, Kasha Belford. Nice to meet you, Kasha. I suppose there was some sort of rule against what I was doing. Deepest apologies, but sometimes there's a shot you just cannot pass up. An accomplished photo photographer, Kasha Belford, won the Fentler Prize, the highest honor in journalism, for her work covering the plague outbreaks and the riots in the capital. It came as a surprise to many that such a reputable journalist would take such interest in this expedition. There was, uh, there was scarcely any chance of Hunt or the benefactor turning her away. You expected someone of her accolades to be older, more experienced, but it is likely her first time on the sea like this. She is not prepared for this. Her proof is all we have. Uh, her accomplishments surely outweigh her youth. Away her youth. He is not prepared for this. That much is obvious. Hmm. The cold game. Picture that as a header. For the piece of this voyage, I'm trying to come up with a snappy name. Nobody will read it if the title sounds uh, like the work of an amateur. I'm not the creative type. I'm sure you, I'm sure you'd know better. Kesha tilts her head and grits her teeth, holding an inner debate with herself. Maybe not. How about Hans' incredible voyage? Too fantastical? I suppose. I'll find the right name when the time comes. I'm getting ahead of myself, aren't I? Apologies, I'm just a little excited. I've never been on a voyage like, voyage like this. I suppose someone of your experience find it all boring at this point. A trip to the eye seemed dull compared to the royal uh, uh, admirality. You, you know who I am. Of course, and through the research, I'm through. I through the research the crew of the Temperance. May seem somewhat excessive, but I feel it's necessary for the proper uh, chronicling. That and plenty of the pictures. Don't worry, Shaw. You don't have a reputation that sets you apart from the rest. A celebrity like Kurt Daring's presence will dwarf, will dwarf any rumors that could form around you. That reminds me, he'll be joining us uh, at the next port. I should get his pic picture at some point. Kasha holds up her camera with a sense of pride before holding it uh, up to her face. Oh no. Stand still, Shaw. Uh, the captain sent me to grab a copy of the manifest. Oh yes, I'm putting together a manifest of the crew for you. She hands you an, uh, a noted document. Here it is, the crew manifest. Ah, perfect. It's a work in progress. The scout team are to join us at the next port, and the captain's forbidding me for the captain's forbidding me from the lowest deck. If you could ask the others to get their portraits taken, I'd be very grateful. Don't want me want to leave anyone out. I'll see what I can do. No, right, thank you, Kasha. She smiles. I'll not disturb you of your work any further, officer. I have a few more shots I want to get before the sun lowers anyhow. Safe shots, officer, don't worry. You leave her to her work. She will be fine. I mean, she will be fine. You spot a large man with a youthful gain carrying a heavy crate over his shoulders with a relative ease. Oh, your officer Shaw. He gives a bright, warming smile. A bright, warming smile. Two Jones. That's what they call me. I'm sure you, you get a nickname later. 
Uh, two Jones attempts it all for a handshake, but losing control of the crazy struggles before firmly holding it back in place with both hands. Uh, maybe la later. Work awaits. If you say so. You find yourself almost knocking over the man carrying a heavy pot. Careful, careful. You almost got drenched in broth. I apologize. Uh, I'm in a rush. I'm in a rush. On the request for hunt. Uh, you're the ship's cook, aren't you? Indeed I am. And I've got a, got a full plate in my hands. Pardon the pun. You hear a roar from the other side of the door. Oi, what's holding you up? The cook shakes his head with a smile and chuckles uh, slightly to himself. He grabs a large pot and prepares to make his way to the hungry crew before turning his head to you. If you don't mind, could you carry that tray of biscuits behind me? You grab, you grab the plate and follow the cook out the door and to the table where the crew are waiting with uh, bated breath. Upon the cook's arrival, the sailors uh, let out a rowdy cheer, the ship's cook placing the broth upon the table. Trust me, fellas, this one's worth the wait. The cook, the cook speaks with a tone of pride as he ladles the broth into the bowls of the crew. Of the crew. Oi, one at a time, you animals. Ward, you're awfully handsy for one, only one arm. Ah, uh, piss off, Junior. Got some bread here too, grab it fast before Tucker beats you to it. The crew laugh and are merry, and are merry as Junior guides you back through the kitchen. Uh, we weren't properly introduced. Robin Shaw, right? I've been keeping track of all the new crew. You're in Stokes, but nobody calls me that. You're here and call me Junior. Yeah, you should do the same. No idea why Hunt picked someone who's never worked with a first mate. But you seem the helpful sort. Glad to have you aboard. Yeah, you seem popular. Yeah, you seem popular. Well, you know what they say about the hand that feeds. Besides half of the crew known me for years. You don't spend that much time on a ship with folks without learning all about them. Uh, well, Hunt wished to see, wished uh, to see you as soon as possible. Ah yes, good old Hunt. Never rest on this ship, let me tell you. Especially when Hunt takes a liking to you. Uh, the crew have their meal. It passes in relative silence. The crew return to the post. The hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the evening. Twilight falls. Over in you overhear the stowaway speaking with a one with a one armed man. You will be dropped off at the next port then. Da, can you talk to the captain into letting me stay, right? Can't talk to Hunt into any, anything when his mind's made up. Besides, he's right. But I can help. You're lucky they didn't throw you overboard. When we make land, I'm making sure you catch a trip back home. I'll be back after this. Not soon enough. Well, that's good. Oh, okay, let me see. I forgot we can pan. Uh, not really much of pan here, is it? That's lower deck, I guess. Uh, you spot one of Tem Templeton's science teams pacing around the middle deck. Searching through some luggage that uh, has been pulled down from a cabin. 
Uh, let me look in the light. Where was it now? He noticed you. Ah, Officer Shaw, correct. Uh, Dwight Glossley. Apologies. I seem to have misplaced something while setting in the cabin. Setting in the cabin. A bottle of wine, actually. It uh, can't be hard to miss. It will turn up eventually. I would hope so. My wife and I brought a bottle to celebrate with. It will save, uh, to be saved from the journey back, of course. Well, if you find it, please let me know. Alright, well, we'll keep an eye on a bottle of wine, I suppose. Uh, I don't see any bottle here. Can a captain have taken it? As you look over the railing out uh, to the ocean, a wisp of smoke flies past your face. You turn to examine this and spot a sailor with a pipe in his mouth and a sheet of paper in his hand, overlooking the stirring waters. Looking at something? Who are you? Tashi. After introducing himself, Taffy falls silent and begins to read the letter. Trying to draw a conversation from him may be similar to ex extracting a teeth. Uh, we will not do that. Uh, use Bot Templeton. Looking out into the sunset as you approach, he turns to you and nods. Ah, uh, Officer Shaw. It will be some time before we see a sunset such sunset such as this again the light distribution towards the southern pole is quite a change I know that you weren't at a dinner with the others uh, I prefer to eat in solitude I have my own cabin and I make uh, use of it yeah me too that's the way I eat too Templeton keeps his focus on the reflection of the setting sun over the steering waters of the ocean. There is great expectation upon us, officer. From who? Who is this benefactor of ours? That is not for you that is not for you to know. Not yet. Templeton looks down, catching his reflection in the ocean's surface. He looks back up at the sunset. Quite the sight. But I wouldn't linger upon it too long. We should retire for the evening. It's important to first officer. And be well rested. So we're not going to sleep for a full week. Let me see. Uh, so we make it to the to port. We got the sledding dogs and the scouting crew. And the store is left off at the port with a pittance to buy their way home. The days are getting brighter as you move further south.
Come in. Uh, the doors, the door swings open to reveal Kurt the Darling. All but filing, all but filling its frame, grinning ear to ear. Oh, there you are, off the shore. The ship's uh, navigator is diff the ship's navigator is a difficult man to miss. Stature and reputation precedes him. Adorned with a slew of uh, apparatus, this seemingly one-man expedition will be known to anyone following the heyday of exploration and the merchandising that followed. It's an honor. Really. A wealth of invaluable experience in such hostile environments, I wonder he has not been swept up uh, to some other post. Hiding away, hiding away from the rest of us, are you? Are you always this early to rise? These days I tend to enjoy a good lie-in, but not during an expedition. You know what they say of early birds and worms? I apologize for not stopping by sooner, Sean. It took a while to set up my team, and a great deal of the crew were quite eager to meet me. Uh, it's not that often I work with a film star, is it? Certainly. It's completely understandable on their part. There aren't many who have seen my films. Particularly in this line of work. More than one fellow on this crew said my work inspired him to explore the wor world. Quite an honor, is it not? I'm certain you received that praise, praise of 10. And not as often as you would think. Ahem. I suppose I, get, I did get distracted, didn't I? Anyway. I was hoping you'd join me up deck. Uh, of course, but why? We finally entered the... Uh, we finally entered the pack. I thought you wanted to see it for yourself. Uh, I'm... I'll, uh, right... I'm right behind you, Kurt. Uh, Kurt turns, turns to walk away before turning back. Oh, and enjoying your morning. It's a good day, Shaw. Or he leaves. Good. Well, let's go then. No wine bottle here, is it? Who is this? Uh, you know, you know, one of the science team returning to the room. Ah. Uh, Mrs. Gloss, did you have a good rest? She nods to you. Ah, uh, hello. I did not expect uh, many to be up this early. Harry Glossley. I believe I met your husband. Ah, uh, yes. Dwight made the uh, mention of your encounter. He is still fast asleep. He is uh, adjusted to the ship well. I believe a walk around the ship will help acclim acclimate myself to the waves. Perhaps it will take some more time. With that, Miss Gloss makes her way back to her cabin. The science team aren't used to the sea or, well, well to the sea or the sailor folk. Quite a cultural clash, isn't it? Well, I'm sure they'll grow used to them over time. Yes, sir, I guess. Uh, the door to the doctor's office remains locked. Seems the good doctor isn't in. Or perhaps enjoying his sleep. You are yet to come across the ship's doctor, even after all this time. At the stern, you notice an older say an older sailor at the helm. The old man takes in a deep breath in the cold air before letting out a satisfied exhale. Morning. 
and a good morning to you. He eyes up you up. Off is ashore, right? Lefty. Uh, call me that on account of... Uh, well, should be obvious. He chuckles. Uh, don't worry about the bad side. This is all feel. Just keeping her steady. He examines you. Surprise hunt picked the... Uh, Surprise hunt picked from outside. Outside for, for his first mate. Uh, would you prefer the roll? You seem to have experience. <laughs> Definitely not. His whole body can't take the pressure pressures anymore. Definitely not. This old body can't take... Yeah, okay. Besides, I've worked on other ships. Others have worked with Hunt much longer. You must be something special for Hunt to look outside the ranks. Hunt doesn't have much fondness for the military. But uh, it at least means you got the whole ethic. Mornings like these are about the only piece I got... Only piece I get from the younger lot. You should take uh, these moments when you can. Left of returns his attention to the helm. As you get older, I suppose you learn to value the quiet moments, eh? Let us hope we're we're just as diligent when we are old and grey. Myself before you, of course. You join Kurt at the bow of the ship. You both feel the temperance break the flows below you. Gripping the railing, it draws an enormous breath. The footing beneath rises as the ship mounts, uh, rises as the ship mounts an impedient ice flow. There is a moment of hesitation before a profound crack relieves the ship, cascading across the ice. He exhales. See? Nothing else like it. You weren't wrong. It's something, alright. Look at the eyes. No. Two crack are the same. Um... just want to show me the eyes? Or is there something you want to discuss? Uh, we're about a week's sail from the last uh, location known of the old vice count. Assuming she isn't exactly where they left her. We can't take smooth sailing for granted. Same goes for this daylight. It won't remain this bright from so, uh, for so long once winter and encroaches. Beautiful as the ice is, on this uh, course it's going to get thicker. It looks out across the white. We won't be so confident when the leads dry up and we're stuck here until the next cycle. We need to change course. Avoid the, avoid the pack. Have you informed, informed Captain Hunt? He won't listen to me. Thinks I've, uh, I've been dulled by retirement. I've probably seen more eyes than he has whiskey. We have, more, we have enough supplies if it comes to that. It's not the supplies I'll be worried about in that situation. People will turn on each other before they let themselves starve. Have you ever experienced a long night winter? It's not pleasant to say the least. I can't say that I have. We're only as good as the unha unhappiest man, Robin. I'll do what I can. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. 
Kurt nods and turns back to look across the eyes. I think whatever to shut him up. Well, that would be me up, but whatever. Ah, sure. Ready for another day of work? Can you hear Kurt's advice? He wants us to switch course. I, he had a few words to share. He may have been an expert in his time, but these day, days Kurt is one uh, with more money than sense. Anyway, back to work. I was hoping you'd help me work through a few more requests from the crew. You may have noticed a line pooling outside. Everyone wants something, it seems. Call them in as you please. Uh, Hammond. A short, sour faced man in engineer clothing approaches. Are you acting daft, Hunt? Uh, not with intention. No bloody surprise uh, you didn't notice. So, this is our chief engineer, Clive Hammond. An uh, opionated one. What is it, Hammond? We've hit the eyes. You have to sign the next men down on the boiler. You have your engineering team, and we've only got six arms between us. I need more manpower maintaining the sa sailors. Many of the crew have their own tasks they are busy with. I know I already assigned the smurf on the matter. The captain turns to you. How many do you think is fair? One? Three? More? Uh, open a crew manifest and choose how many sailors you wish to, wish to assign. Okay. Uh, let me see. Does it say... Uh, say... Uh, what does this mean? Saltborn? Amputee? Smoke, rope savvy, gun savvy? Take um, two Jones, run stack Warbit and Joe. You give me Ward? Ward with one bloody arm? Would you rather none? The engineer hold his tongue. Fine. You can tell me how right I was when we buried under ice. He leaves. A good spirit, that one. Beneath the oil and the temper. You won't be seeing much of him, though. Prefers to burrow himself into the boiler room. Captain Shaw. No, Captain Shaw. I thought that occurred to me the other day while looking through the crew manifest and... Well, it might be too late for this uh, now that uh, we already entered the ice. Out with it. I thought it would be good to have an individual photos of the full crew. For your report? Uh, not only for my re for my report, it would be good reference for the manifest, but faces to the names. Much of this crew have served me for years, some decades. I have little problem putting faces to the names. Your thoughts, Shaw? Uh, it would seem a good idea, if nothing else. It would make uh, for a good souvenir. Sentimental with the expedition, are you? Some proper photographs will uh, have some historical weight to it. Well, Belfort, I see no problem there. I'll arrange for the pictures to be taken before the crew have their dinner. Thank you, Captain. Sure. In the meantime, I'll attempt to get as many individual crew photos as I can. You're still welcome to help on the matter, Officer Cho. She departs, satisfied.
Uh, Captain, the word is going round that the stowaway we removed last week about the stowaway. It has? Aye. And their thoughts? They aren't one bit ha happy. Least of all, he's da. He says it wasn't right to send the boy away. Only reason Ward stayed aboard was because he needed the pay. I've been, I've been arms, are they? No, they understand. Spares more food for the rest of us. Still, not a wise move to upset my crew, is it? Cho, sure, perhaps we should consider the crew's feeling next time. She leaves. Well, uh, it's, it's like that. Uh, good to have all that settled then. Perhaps we shouldn't rule out old Kurt so easily. If the man thinks there could be an alternative path through the ice, he's free, uh, free to search for it. Cha, meet with him when you have time. Changing course or not, uh, we'll want one of his scouts set up in the crow's nest. Take care of that and you'll be done for the day. You overhear two of the newly arrived uh, scouting crew talking. Ah, Quilsy. Have any trouble, trouble settling in? Not so bad, I can't wait for a chance of sleep though. A proper navigator never rests until, the, until their work is done. Of course, of course. I think you had no issue settling in. Not at all, the crews are a funny lot. Old Kurt certainly caught their attention. How oh, do you think any of them would mistake Kurt and myself? I think I'll collapse from joy if they did. Ah, perhaps. Uh, he spots you and sees his, sees in his playing. Need something? Uh, you're uh, grimly, aren't you? Or grimly. The man grunts. Aye. Grimly Stoke. I am the ship's carpenter. Ah, then you're Junior's brother. Junior? Oh, you're Shaw. Uh, Junior mentioned you. Yeah, I was just speaking to him too. In a positive or negative light. Ask him yourself. Don't keep you from your work. Don't keep me from my break. Huh. Uh, you spot a suspicious looking sailor emerge from the pantry. Do the sailor spots you keeping their hands firmly in the pockets. Not what it looks like, Officer Shaw. They were. Uh, but call me gn gnomes. I'm not thieving anything. I hadn't considered that, but now... You think... You think I protest too much, then? No worries, so you're setting up a practical joke. And... Well, well, be best of luck with that. Thank you. If not at your expense, if that's your concern. I have to get some enjoyment around here, don't you think? Uh, with their mysterious traps and gnome scurries off uh, to the upper deck to return to work. Uh, tin food. You life a crate of tins from the uh, shelves. Ah, one step ahead of me. If you add those tins to the hoosh, we should be good for dinner. What would be today, Sean? Uh, well... I don't know. That's that it. Don't have anything else. Confirm your orders.
While examining the rigging of the ship, your eyes notice a figure darting by, climbing on the ropes with ease. Uh, the figure lands on their feet before dusting themselves off. Their outfit denotes one of Kurt's scouting crew. Ah, uh, no. No problems. She looks at you. And you are? Uh, Officer Shaw. Yourself? Look, uh, I'm uh, one of Kurt's crew. Don't worry about my safety. I know what I'm doing. Trust me. Uh, Kurt doesn't just hire anyone. Well, he didn't hire me for no reason. Uh, got the medals in gymnastics if you're worried about my credentials. Uh, Flick jumps up and returns to scaling the rigging of the ship. Yeah, her name is not uh, that, but okay. Uh, send me up there. I guess you are reading. The scientists I... The scientist eyes the man's cane and turns to you. I believe the navigator means uh, you to send one of his scouts. The navigator clears his throat and taps his cane. Of course. If you find one of mine, they will get us a reading, rightly. The sick young man. Seasick. You spot, a, you spot a youthful looking man leaning over the side of the ship. Uh, his head uh, slumped as he looked into the icy pool below. It appears he's been uh, visited by a spot of seasickness. Pat him on the back. You make your way to the man and reach out your own to pack the sickly fellow on the back. As soon as you are reaching, he jolts right uh, up in shock. A bespeaked young man shaking with unease. He stares for you for a brief moment, a look of... Shame plastered upon his face. Sorry. Are you alright? Um, yes. Well, not really. I am very sorry. The man turns around and hurried run and hurried runs in the opposite direction, avoiding your gaze. Uh okay. Let's get uh, York the Third. Uh, they are sent to the nest and take a reading with, an, with a sextant. A glorious sight, if I say so myself. Uh, the last known location of the Vice Count, your destination. And we are. Well, where are we? We are here? You la the last port you made, where you picked up Kurt and the scouting uh, team from. Okay. Why don't we just go through here? Wait. Okay, that's our cabin, okay. Uh, the crew have their meal. Uh, shall we toast to the ice? Aye. The days get longer, but dinner? Dinner is fixed. It will see us through the long days and the darkness night, the darkest nights. Uh, the crew will return to their posts. The Hammonds are unfurled in their preparation for the evening. You can't help but notice that it is still bright light outside. You notice two sailors passing from the dinner from the dinner table. An inebriated sailor on wobbling legs leaning on the shoulder of another. Ah, good times, good times. Need to learn to handle your drink, Tucker. Ah, but I'm fine. My mates can carry me, eh, Cavity? They can also drop you. Have two youngs carry you next time. Are you as asleep? Shit. Uh, door? You knock on the door. No response.
Uh, you over here, two engineers chatting about tech. Or rather, you over here, one engineer speaking with another. Uh, don't know how the chief uh, could stay down there all evening. You ever see Mr. Hammond eat? I haven't. Maybe he doesn't eat. Man's not human if he can work all day and night on that boiler. Probably doesn't sleep either. He probably sleeps. Hey, hey I think it's figurative. Right. Hmm. Uh, the dog, the dogs regard her with rapt attention as she paces between them, bowl in hand. The largest joins, the largest joins her side as you approaches. Try some. You nearly burn your mouth on the hot bro broth. Um, surprisingly tasty. He feels I'm warming up. He seems to enjoy it. I'm afraid there is only so much if you want more. It will be among the dog's leftovers. Uh, penguins, some blubber, fats and proteins. That's the way to hydrate them. Uh, was there something you needed? Uh, just inspecting the animals. They belong here more than we do. Unlike us, they need eyes. It cools them uh, through their paws and uh, as they run. They only they only overheat otherwise. You've been on the ice for a long time. A long time, yes. Strong uh, creatures. Very. They handle stref stress differently. Adapt quickly. There's plenty to be learned from them. Uh, who sat beside you? Yeah, this is Stranberry. Uh, it was barking to us. Uh, you love these animals. They need me, and you will need them. I don't dare to pet Stranberry. Let's leave. Well, I think uh, that's it for this night, this evening. Let's go. Three weeks on the temperance. Captain Hunt appears to be absent. His chair is unoccupied. Uh, wait for Captain Hunt. Oh. Uh, what in the... Well, I was worried about this. Look at that eyes. We could be trapped uh, for a while. Strong pressures. As if we didn't have enough bother. Well, no need mucking around. Let's get to work. Where's Hunt? I'll grab you. I'm sure he felt it too. John, check the boiler room. I'm sure the mole man has problems of his own. Not to worry, everyone. We'll be free and moving again before you know it. Back to work. Wait. 
This is not how the map looks like la looked like last time I checked. There was a path, but not anymore. After the show, what happened? Chips come to stop. I almost flung my camera into the wall. We didn't hit anything, did we? Have you seen Hunt? Not since this morning. He was going to speak with Grimly about the life pose last I heard. Okay, uh, that doesn't bode well. Uh, take coal. I, if I, if I make errors, uh, if I'd make errors any, uh, <laughs> hold on. Let's just see like this. If I'd made any errors, I'd tell you. You'll be secure, don't you worry. They notice you. I'm sure you're aware of the situation. What's happening? I'm ensuring that the boiler was not damaged in a sudden commotion. And I told you if it was, I'd already know. I'm not in much business, bus business of making mistakes. I know that if the furnace goes, we go down with it. Yes, but you're only one man, which is a pair of engineers at assistance. Just looking at the number of vel valves, it seems far too much for you to handle. Make your bloody benefactor. Maybe your bloody benefactor should have considered that. I've gotten used to it by now. It will hold, trust me. I I will. Well, I will have to, won't I? I don't fancy staying on this ship much... Uh, this ship any longer than necessary. It's imperative we break free from that ice as quick as possible. Hammond eyes to you. A grimace on his face. First mate here. First mate's here, but... Where's the one who got us into this bloody mess? He's a difficult one to find. Indeed he is. I have a suspicion as to where he may be now. We're on a ship, and I'm moving one at that. The man cannot simply disappear. If he's anywhere, he must be in his cabin. When you find a man, give him an earful on my behalf. Can't do it myself, too busy keeping us alive. Templeton gives us a nod. I believe you. I both owe our good captain a visit, Shaw. Not before we fed this furnace. Mind grabbing some coal from the bunker, Shaw? Or are you afraid of getting hamster like Mr. Templeton over here? Hmm. Coal goes in. We stay alive. Really, it's that simple. for dinner all right well, the captain is not here where is he see him either. He didn't pass by, but his cabin door was locked when I checked. Slippery bastard. What were you thinking? Hunt.
No sign of Han to take it. Mr. Templeton passed by, but he wasn't exactly willing to take questions. Uh, keep it up, lads. We'll set ourselves right in no time. Ah, sure. I just saw Templeton entering the captain's cabins. Seems uh, Hunt holed himself up inside. Maybe if you had a word with a good captain, be willing to lend a hand. Oh, yeah, no, he's dead, is he? Hmm. Also, I was informed that he was here. Where could he hit himself? He has to be in a check under his desk. I highly doubt he recovering, recovering beneath the table, Shaw. A uh, horror. Oh, he's alive. The captain laugh rings out from behind the door. The captain watches you both, his head swaying as he chuckles to himself. You're a surprising different, difficult man to get hold of, Hunt. Seeing that this is your ship. Ah, I know it well. Hunt's eyes turn to you. I believe you two are already acquainted. How long have you been drinking? I don't suppose you care to join. Hunt shakes the whiskey bowl as uh, he holds it out. The liquid sloshing and spilling from the top. And what of you, Shaw? I can't tempt you with some sweet nectar. Uh, I'm fine. You'll be more than fine with a drink in you. Ah oh, well, your loss. You intend to offer drinks at this time in a time like this. This ship, your ship, is trapped in the ice. It's my ship now, is it? And what do you expect me to do? Get the shovels out? Uh, what do you mean? This isn't your ship? Uh, bought at an auction. Not by myself. Imagine that, captain of a private vessel. And I not even own it. Pathetic. Mr. Hunt, captain. If you are not fit to stand, then you should retire from for the night. Cho will stand in your stead and we can continue in the morning. And abandon my duty? No. No captain who would do that is fit captain. Wouldn't you agree? Well... Not you. Shaw, isn't that right? What do you think makes for a good leader? Uh, making, making the difficult choices. Choices nobody else wants to make. Uh, do you think you could live with yourself? They all act like the choice is a different part. The choice is easy, Shaw. Instinctual. It's not be is not being able to sleep after. That's uh, what they never prepare you for. But I'm serious. Cho, to you, what makes a good leader? We don't have time for... In a word then. What makes a leader? Understanding? Understanding? Explain. The ability to adapt your crew, to understand the individual needs that makes up the whole. And if those and if those needs conflict, it's all well and good to think you can bend and twist and please everyone. Do you think you could balance that? Score a man one day and appease him the next. Do you think that balances out? Which is more likely to remember? Speaking in attitudes will do you no good. A good leader is something more than a single rule you were told to follow. When you see one, you just know. You're wasting enough time uh, feeling, philo uh, feeling philosophical. Oh, my apologies. I'll ask the real questions. Uh, Shaw, look at where we are. Do you honestly think we're going to survive this? Uh, 
I have no doubt we will. Well, I suppose someone has to carry faith with them. The captain laughs. Shaw, sure, nobody knows we're out here. That doesn't leave this room. No, no. Wouldn't want to upset your employer. Our benefactor. We all want to be paid after this, don't we? Enough. If you weren't fit to lead this expedition, you should not have agreed to it. You you shouldn't be. None of us should be here. Old Kurt. Kurt paid handsomely to join. You're just a botanist sent to keep an eye on me, our doctor, and... Uh, and there, there's me. What are we actually searching for? Uh, Hunt chuckles, gesticulating his hands mockingly. Ghosts? Templeton opens the door. The captain needs his rest. We'll discuss this once he's of sound mind. Let him speak, Templeton. I wish to know more. It's alright, Robin. Go on now, Shaw. I'll be alright here. Uh, if you say so. He and he fell asleep. <laughs> Alright. Alright, okay, yeah. Nothing special. Let's go and sleep then. You awake to a room awash with green. It's not bang on your door, and a familiar voice speaks from the behind the wood. Shaw, you in there? Shaw, Emma, what's going, going on? Why is everything green? Never mind the green, the boiler is in serious trouble. Pump needs uh, man, and we need man, and we need to stop the whole system overheating. And I don't need to tell you if the furnace goes, we go. Lead away, then we don't have a moment to spare. Right, let's move. We need to find a captain now. The lights of the row flickers over the pale eyes. Nothing. Uh, visible uh, perturbed. He takes a moment to compose himself. Even the tub is empty. Why would you? You're expecting to be in the tub. Not important. This doesn't make sense. The man seemed barely fit to crawl himself into bed earlier. What? Hammond turns to you. Alright, Shaw. Captain's missing. You're in charge. We can't give up on Hunt that easily. I, I bloody well can. He misses... It. Missed this chance to take the reins. Yes, indeed. The crew are no doubt waking at this moment. They are no doubt scared, confused. It's your duty to keep them calm, to maintain order. Hammond glares at Templeton. It's Charles' job to get down to the boiler room now. We've already wasted enough time looking for this for that bastard hunt. If you storm down to that room, all we're going, all you're doing is inciting a panic. We need to calm the fears of the crew. Maintain an air of focus. Light to them as the ship goes under. Not at all, instead, to assure them we know how to remedy this matter. You. Do know how to remedy this... M you do know how to remedy this matter, Mr. Hammond. Aye. And we need to be quick. I don't have uh, time to worry about some stupid sailor, f sailor feelings. We got a bloody ship to save. Well, it is as you said. Of the Shaw is in charge. The decision is yours. There, yeah, we need to go. Hammond's right. We can't waste any more time. The boiler won't wait for us. Fine. I'll keep the crew at bay then. Come on, don't worry about him. Let's go. As Mordecai notices you and Hammond, but then the whispers begin. 
So the group picked up the pace, walking in directionless with hurried footsteps. Kurt approaches. All the traveler take it. I lend a hand. Knows when you're walking with that cane, you're not. I have enough strength to go tell the crew to hit the lower decks as soon as possible. Let's go, Shaw. Time to save this blasted ship. Uh, you descend the ladder. Ahead you can see the brothers trying to open the door to the hold. Uh, where are you two heading? Boiler. We need to keep the furnace alight. The metal door unsticks. Grimm looks at you before darting off into the dark. What? Where's the bloody idiot running off to? The sound of the alarm. Bloody hells. Let's get moving. You enter the boiler room. As you enter, Hammer, Ham, Hammer's engineering team are hard at work. The larger of the two engineers loses grip of their valve as steam begins to shoot out, causing Hammond's dash forward. Watch it. Hammond's attack is engineered to the ground, saving him from a nasty steam burn. Made it just in time. What's the word, Chief? Keep those wells pumping. We need to avoid a water hammer. We need to avoid a water hammer. Or we won't be making it off this ship. Sure. The rest of the crew aren't here. Grab a valve and start turning. Hammond is turning, trying all you can to keep the water at bay. Um. You feel the ache in your muscle, you continue to push the well, keeping the pressure at bay. You keep turning, doing the best you can to keep the pressures at bay. This could... We could be at this for hours. Shit. Where's the rest of the crew? Uh, brought help. Furnace rumbles and sputters. Get me coal and turn those valves. enough hands working on the body you begin to fight uh, the potential water hammer someone's going to have to hold the furnace in place he, is, he will be strong enough as they approach a furnace the room shakes water hammer oh no I hit the steam paints John if the side says they're right in agony, you keep up the work shifting the valves until the boiler is fully calm. The ship is saved, you won't be singing today. As you give assessment to the wounded John, you feel your muscles tense. You fall back collapsing from exhaustion. As you lay as you lay back, all you can hear are a pair of panicked voices. Okay, let's just go with normal rations now. Okay, let's not go with normal rations. Oh wait, it's because of this one maybe. Uh, 
Uh, you're alone in the captain's co captain's cabins. Out across the deck can be heard the commotion of the crew. Orders pass quickly. The captain hunt is missing. Templeton slips in through the door. Shaw. Sure. Still no sign of Hunt. I'm afraid not. Hunt is still missing. And he isn't alone in, in that regard. Oh no. Sanders, Sparrow and Gren are also unaccounted for. As is the sizable food and... As is a sizable food and fuel supply. And one of the larger lifeboats. Shaw, you and I are not naive. It seems quite clear what has happened here. Yes, but why would Hunt abandon us? That is the question I cannot answer. I doubt we'll ever know at this stage. The former captain is no longer with us. You understand what that means, Shaw. That would be Captain Shaw now, I take it. Not quite yet. A new captain must be selected by the crew. As first mate, you uh, you have the most clear argument to take that role. And how do I argue for that role? Your presence in the face of Hans' absence is an argument in itself. They will hold a vote as soon as possible. That carpenter grimly. He is still loyal to Hunt and many of the sailors will follow his vote, if not all. Though I can assure you have the vote of myself and my scientists. Kurt and his crew are like to support you as well. I'm unsure where the engineers will side, but they're likely loyal to their pay. Uh, John is still recovering from uh, the si them si steam burns, which may end up working to our favor, and the civilians are a mystery. But I believe all is said. When all is said and done, you uh, will just make about the vote. We'll just about make the vote. Now, how can you be sure? I cannot. But it is a measured risk. They're waiting outside, Shaw. They're scared. They don't know where to turn. You and I both understand the importance of maintaining decorum. Tough times seem dire, remember. There is a rescue ship on its way. Even if the temperance falls, we still have a potential escape. Uh, what? 42 weeks. The ship will arrive at Viscount Island in 42 weeks. We should focus on surviving that long. That is all we need to do, Captain. I understand. We can hold out that long. Indeed. That is all we need. 42 weeks, Captain. Keep it in mind. Here. You should have this. The table don't present you with a fancy looking hat. Hunt's hat. He left it behind in his cabin. That tells us what we need, doesn't it? The commotion outside grows. I choose to willingly observe reality. I suggest you do the same, Captain. The scientist refrains for a moment. Out with Templeton. I think it's best we declare that the Captain and the missing crew are dead. There is no need for us to complicate things any further. I won't lie to him, Templeton. Leaders lie, get used to it. The crew are waiting for you, to, for you on the deck. The last place you saw Captain Hunt. Still drops of whiskey. Frozen. Then it must be really cold. Uh, Hunt's ledger is gone. Address the crew. The hushed voices became become more distant as you make your way back into the open air. You notice the absence of John. 
The crew members notice you and stop. Their intended rip attention ripples across the deck. Attention. It should be clear by now the Captain Hunt is no longer serving his post. As such, we should vote in a new captain. I nominate Officer Shaw for the role. The clear choice as first mate. And what of Hunt? I do not see him among us. Do you? I don't see a body either. He's still out there. We don't know what happened. Something we can discover. For now, someone has to take the reins of command. All in favor of Officer Shaw? Uh, vote for the... Okay. Abstained. You've been confirmed as the captain of the expedition. Well, the eyes have it. Shaw shall be acting captain from this point forward, acting in Captain Hunt's stead. The crowd looks at you ex expectantly as Templeton gives you you, you a knowing nod. A moment, of, a moment passes in the call as they await your next words. Curious murmuring scattering between the crews. As I look to you, it's not long before the obvious question spills from the crew's member's mouth. Where is Captain Hunt? Captain Hunt abandoned us. He you noticed know, Templeton's eyes widen, whispering into rolls through the crowd. He appears to have left this, this expedition along with three missing crew and one of our lifeboats. A silence hangs in the air. As long as we keep our wits, there's no reason we can't survive this. See, I know you're all scared. You'd be a fool not to be. Uh oh. Uh, let's see, the crowd begins to bubble up once more, with more and more questions coming to the surface. Members of the crew started speaking out one by one, with questions thrown your way in quick succession. How are we supposed to survive out here? Is help coming? What about our pay? We will still be paid? Uh, our immediate priority. Until we are freed from the pack, or help arrives. Additional food. It's to find additional food. Current supplies will only take us as far as trapped in the ice. Ask for reports. I would like the head of each, each station give me a report. Uh, to report to me going forward. You know where to find me. What of those lost, Captain? Those lost are no longer here. For now, we must worry about ourselves. Uh, let's have a memorial service then. Read from the eyes. Understood. Well, you're the captain. The crowd dis uh, dissipates, returning to their roles aboard the ship. You pass Templeton. He glares at you. I told you. I won't lie to them. If we can't be honest with each other, what chances do we have? I hope you're right. Kirch. Sure. Or should I say Captain Shaw? That hunt. 
He didn't seem the type to just leave his crew behind. Still, no good dwelling. I have confidence you'll make, a, make up the mantle well. We'll see. It's no good to be cynical, Captain. You need to set an example for the crew. You keep your chin up, they raise their heads in turn. They were sleeping. Captain, how are ya? As long as uh, you ain't in my way any more than Hunt was, I'm happy. How's the boiler keeping? Well, we aren't dying, that's a relief. Don't know how, how well the furnace will hold. We'll keep her going as long as you aren't distracting me. Kogo seems to stay alive, yeah. I know, I know. It's all up. You saw the duties of the captain first hand while serving Hunt. You're acting captain now. It's time to take up that mantle. I line the soldier for forming at the door, no surprise given the circumstances. Take them as you may, Captain. Captain, I brought Kennel Master with me. This is something to do with something you will both want to hear. I have a strong suspicion on uh, what this matter is. I was planning to speak with the captain on it myself. Fortunate happenstance then. Captain, I know these conditions well, I've seen them before. Any idea of the temperance being freed from the ice anytime soon is a pipe dream. We need to press on, we need to become aware of our new environment. Trust me captain, we'll... We will be living off it for quite some time. Oh no. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. You want to eat the dogs, is that what you want to do? No, it doesn't say here. I don't know. What of you, Cordell? Uh, indeed. The dogs... Uh, okay, good. They will not eat the dogs. The dog says we'll need to be exercised regularly. And there is no better way than to engage in hunting. We're quite lucky, despite the circumstances. Now is the peak time for hunting and navigation. And navigation? Traversing the ice may be possible in the future. We need to be prepared for that. If we are to survive out there, we need to know what lies ahead. These are uncharted territories, Captain. We have no idea where we are. Your current rations are not uh, are not set to last forever either. Send the, any hunting parties to me any hunting party to me as you please. My dogs now will ensure their survival. For the exits. The same sentence for myself and any scouting teams. If you wish the great unknown, wish the great unknowns to be brave and sharted, I'm your man. We need to know what lies ahead. Keep looking forward. Uh, I will take Hammond last. Junior. Sean. The ice looks uh, unbulging, doesn't it? It would seem that way, yes. Crew seems to think so. They think if we don't intervene, the temperance will never get freed. 
if you're suggesting breaking the ice, I can assure you that won't work. I'm not. They are. No intervention is going to break up the ice enough to free the ship. Putting others to work on that is simply a waste of manpower. Hey, yeah, maybe. They're scared though. Worried. They just want to feel like they tried something. Well, um, we do need the... Uh, what's the good? That was it called. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna call this morale. <laughs> Ice savvy might be something good to have here. Why can't we? I need to fill this completely. Okay, I see. Uh, let me see then. Let's grab the scouts. They are all I savvy. If it will raise spirits, it's worth the attempt. Agreed. I'll see you for dinner, Captain. Don't forget the hooshbot needs fe feed. Or fed. Needs to be fed. Saving that boiler was only the start of our troubles. Have you seen the state of this bloody ship? It was uh, yes, he has certainly seen better days. We need the uh, ta we need to stockpiles as we need to say uh, damn it. We need to um We need to stockpile as much fuel as we can. If the furnace runs out by the end of the week we die. If we spend too uh, long on the ship, we die. If we don't uh, stock by enough fuel for the winter, we die. Hey, get me some coal. Get in the furnace. I'm afraid it's not wrong. That coal bunker is our only source of fuel for the time being. Until we can produce alternatives, we should assign crew for shoveling whatever possible. Uh, finish. Before dinner, you should uh, you should see uh, to sending out our first sledding team. I also believe it's time we gave our good doctor a visit. We'll still have wounded from the night of the Aurora. Their wounds will not be attended to before they fit to work. And I doubt I need to remind you of this, but we need every hand available. Don't be afraid of assigning my team for some manual labor. They'll complain, but they'll work. You did uh, seem familiar. I finally placed you. Like, have you? Have you have? Have you? Yeah, I remember seeing you compete. Soren uh, Killipper, you were quite a gymnast. I'm surprised to see you in this line of work. Not so many gymnasts carry long careers. You did quite well when I saw you at the summer games. I recall uh, you placed. Uh, I don't recall winning. I, uh, two Jones. I can't believe Hunt is gone. What happened? Who knows, he was drunk, whatever he was thinking, he definitely wasn't in in the right mind. 
And what about uh, Smurf? And Corvid and Joe? Who knows? Corvid owes me five gills. I don't think you'll be seeing it soon. Alright, um... Uh, scout the uh, east. Oh no, the scouts are out, I forgot. Scouts for this, and I already messed up. Oh, are you the doctor? Yeah, you enter the ship's infirmary. Your presence seems to have startled a young man inside. The rattle dropped the uh, forceps ringing through the room. Oh, oh goodness, it's you. I'm um, Captain Ow, isn't it? Uh, you're the doctor, I take it. Hmm? Oh, right, yeah, yes, I am. Um, uh, Dr. Artrell, um, Nutley, Do Dr. Nutley. You are not doctor, are you? Dr. Artrell Nutley, that's it. Uh, are you having a spot of bother, bother, Nudley? Bother? N no, I suppose uh, I seem a little scatterbrained at the moment. It, it is in the norm. Recent circumstances has been trying, and the inclination towards seasickness is no help. Um, John, the, the steam burns they suffer from the sun were severe. If you let me take a look, I can do the best to al uh, alleviate the pain. Do you have any experience with something like this? Well, I read extensively on the matter, but as far as first-hand experience goes, well, no. This is my first encounter. At this point, all we can do is wait. A nervous cough. Captain Hunt, he... Uh, uh, do you think he may still be out there? Um, there's a chance, however slim. Right. Perhaps we will run into him again. Um, not that ridiculous, never mind. Apologies, I'm rambling. I suppose you wanted an update on the crew. A report would be nice. Mostly scrapes and scuffs. As for the dogs... They're better asking. Um, I, well. The cannon master? You mean Cordell? Yes, Cordell. I haven't taken well to the dogs. I'm uh, unsure how to carry myself amidst among people, and animals are quite uh, quick to judge. And Cordell itself is harsher still. But you can rely on me for any human medical issues. And not only pauses for a moment. Is everything um, good? I, I mean, is someone coming to rescue us? Everything's under control. Uh, I can take a look at the injure now. Let's see what I can do. Let's just go with this. On set. Officer, uh, Captain Shaw. I suppose you'll get uh, used to calling you that. I was asking the crew if anyone had seen Hunt and any of the searchers last night. Not a single soul. 
I know the man knows his ship well, but that seems odd. Do you think the crew could be lying? I wouldn't accuse anyone of that, but it's very unlikely that he hasn't been seen by anyone. I suppose the boiler trouble caused a great deal of distraction. Uh, shall we give a toast to our new captain? Here, here. Uh, all well and good. Do you need me with something? You served with Captain Hunt for quite some time. Tell me about him. It's none of your business. Uh, well, I fear as much. Looks like we'll be trapped here for a while. I, I don't like the ship's chances either. It'll be some time before we see home. Shit, I'm going to die of boredom out here before the cold takes me. Still manage, I'm sure. Hopefully loud, aren't they? I don't mind it that much. They work hard all day, they own their leisure. Those sailors ought to remember. We all need our sleep. Wait, what about this? Oh, it's Sampleton. There was a room over here too, but not anymore. Captain Shaw, I presume you're here to see the dogs. Yes, yeah, how they're firing. Uh, they've already uh, acclimatized. Acclimatized? The reason they've been exhausted in the need of a rest. It's no surprise, the condition keep changing. They go used to one state before uh, being thrust into another. One refuses to eat and has been losing weight rapidly. I suppose the change in scenery has affected it. They need a rest, just as any person. They tend to be more reliable, however. Are you speaking from experience? With people or with dogs? Regardless, I will say it's a matter of both. Captain Shaw, I recall my conditions with Hunt, do you not? You recall my conditions with Hunt, do you not? Like it was yesterday. My demands was that I work here with the dogs. Your people may help with the sleds, but they are not my responsibility. They're not my people. I'm holding my promise to Hunt. I do not intend to join your crew. If I get lost in the ice, you're the next captain, Stanberry. What else smiles? Confused. That's good. John John is nice. Sure, Templeton words back from attempts of free, at freeing the ship. Is such a report necessary? Well, as you can see, we're not moving. Who kept it kept at it for a week, but now we're calling it a day. A waste of time and resources than as expected. I wouldn't be so sure. End of the day, 
At least now the crew say that they tried, gave it their all. There's something in that. Good day, ca good day Captain. Well, as good uh, as can be under the circumstances. Uh, good, day good day to you as well, Kasha. Well, I'll be sure to spare you any more obligations and ob obligatory small talk from here. In truth, there is something I've been meaning to ask you. It's a matter I brought up with Captain Hunt, though he was less perceptive. I'm not merely interested in the story of this expedition, I'm interested in the story of the people of this expedition. When the crew have their downtime, I will, I will request uh, that I'll be allowed to conduct interviews with them. I would like to know more about them, maybe learn what happened to Hunt. I see any issue there. Conduct an interview as you please. Thank you, Captain. You won't regret it. I'll mark anything used for discovering the crew manifest. Send them to the red room uh, on the lower deck when you can. Uh, word around the crew is that we might end up having to move to the ice. If we can't free the temperance anyway. Would be wise to get... It uh, would be wise to gather what we want to take off ship with us if we do. Indeed, we'll need to prepare for what we could be in the inevitable. I think most of the tools are in the lower deck storerooms. The metal door needs some work to open. But it, it will work. Well, it, uh, it's worth what's inside. Uh, Captain Shaw, M Mr. Templeton. It will... It would appear that some of the crew have taken an interest in the transmission radios we have on hand. It is likely many of their first time seeing their technology. And they have all ideas of what to be capable of. They believe another ship may pick us up if we monitor them. Ridiculous, they do not have the range to pick up another, not out here. I said as much, but they were adamant to spend the night monitoring them regardless. Even sent me to run the concept, to run the concept by you, Captain. It's worth an attempt, even if it's just to assure the crew. Here we go. Oh, really? Oh, that's like your wife. That does seem fair. At least this way, the crew will be certain. Yes, otherwise they will ponder the alternative until we're all frozen. Finish. Ah, uh, feel that air. Nothing better than cold wind to keep you awake. You're an odd uh, duck, Yorick the Third. How many hours of sleep do you get a night? Well, I... Uh, on second thought, better not hearing it. I already know it isn't enough. send one north and uh, we're gonna send uh, this one there we go now we're out of dogs your old cabin nothing here You know, as far as rations go, this is good. Junior sure knows how to prepare dinner, doesn't he? It's too good for a ship like this. Evening, Sean. I'm proud of 
what I've been able to cook up for the crew lately, consider, considering the rations. So, I do wish I had something better to work with. I'd kill for a good beef steak. Uh, you do excellent work, Junior. You have an knack for this. I've been told Hunt uh, would uh, say he wouldn't eat a bite that wasn't prepared by me anymore. I should eat the hay, or well, hammock, I guess there's hay in there. It's getting harder to play. The cold makes the fingers stiff. Have you tried playing closer to the furnace? Not the same. Besides, Hammond would just throw the <laughs> accordion in. Uh, well, it is. We're doing our best. More of the same tonight. We have to get used to it. Not much you can do with the ice. We'll figure something out uh, to do. Once we, we have to. Good evening, Captain. I was growing used to sleeping on the moving ship before we came trapped in the ice, you know. Now I think I won't have a good night's sleep until we return to land. You grow used to it. Goodness, I hope not. I can't imagine how much worse uh, than this becoming the norm. Apart from uh, the friendly company, of course, Captain. I need to finish developing these. Thanks for stopping by, though. Bloody cool, listen, Captain. Don't know how you spend your time away from the furnace. It would be even colder without your hard work, Hammond. I, I know. Don't send to the furnace, you're jabbling to me at night. Not going to get the rest anytime soon, are we? No. Could have used more hands. Hammond is worth five men, but even then. This is your room. It's a, bit, it's a bit small. Evening, Shaw. Cold one, isn't it? I used to think I was growing used to the cold. But as the years have gone on, the elements have only grown harsher on the body. I imagine this is harsher... It's a harsher eye than you ever faced. You'd be surprised, Captain. I will tell you of a few bad scrapes in my time. I'm flat, but I really ought to get some rest, Shaw. Good evening, Captain. It'll be some time before we see rescue. Perhaps you should be endearing yourself to your crew. The very well, I notice you're quite invested in my captaincy. You find that I am invested in our survival, that is tied to how you continue to lead. Well, he does have a point. Oh, he's over here. Captain, a word. I felt now as a good time as to review the wording of our contracts. Do you remember all those written in contracts? Uh, to be honest, I only skimmed the thing. I was already told on the job. Well, I suggest to become more acquainted in the future. Consider Article 3, and I quote, A member of the staff shall truly, shall truly, shall throughout the period of such expedition obey all commands of the captain and shall use his best endeavors to promote the success of the same. And in the events of anything happening, the captain shall be obeyed all commands of any members of the staff who shall be appointed by the captain in the writing 
before his death. It being understood that the rest of the staff shall hold the same relations towards any member of the staff as appointed as towards the captain. Appointed by the captain in the writing before his death. Uh, what are you trying to say? The what we have settled what is only temp a temporary arrangement in the eyes of the law. Even then, you only make it through by the hair. Unless you somehow manage to wrestle a written transfer of captainship from Hunt before his departure, in the eyes of the law you are simply acting instead with no legal recourse to call upon. There's a chance Hunt and the deserter are still out there. Should we be reunited, your captaincy will indeed be called into question. I've seen a issue that wouldn't it be good to have our captain return? You saw Hunt in his final moment with us? Do you trust that man to lead on the ice? That your loyalty of the crew means everything. Get them on your side, Shaw. Keep them on your side. I see. Remember my words, Shaw. As you should start with the Stoke brothers, they seem to be speak of many of... It seems they speak for many of the sailors. Yeah, uh, that's it. That will be moving soon, anytime soon. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Thank you. Now, get some rest. Yeah, yeah, go... Go and sleep. This is a long demo. Uh, Templeton, Kirk, Wardells, and Hammond stands inside. The beginning of a meeting. Well, Captain, it's been three weeks. Kirk tells me there's still no change in the eyes. None and best I can estimate what change we will have, we, we will see one free the ship. I predict the temperance is more likely to be crushed under the pressure of the ice. And how long will that take? A few weeks at most. Unfortunately, we may have to look at alternatives to waiting for the ice to break up. Are you certain it's a lost cause? You never know. But from what I've seen, I wouldn't take the chance. Leaving the temperance and making camp on the ice is something we will have to consider. And the longer we stay on the ship, the more fuel we have to burn. Not to mention risk uh, another boiler incident. Yes, that matter uh, almost costs lives. Eating a smaller can burns through mo much less oil. And without, uh, and without enough fuel to survive a winter, we're dead. I don't think I need to tell you that. I will not be quite so uh, quick uh, to pack up and move out just yet. And why is that? The ship is shelter. The ship is safety. Currently, there are quite a few uh, hunger opportunities presented to us. Hunting opportunities. We will need to gather more food if we are to survive, and the ship provides a safe area to hunt from. Right. And most of the crew aren't ready to give up either. They're stubborn, just as any good crew should be. I would rather not play into stubbornness when lives are on the line. He has a point. The uh, crew think. Uh, crew thinks we gave up too early uh, they'll resent the captain for it though we now have a serious uh, bloody flooding problem oh no we do hey we might have uh, noticed if uh, you left your damn forecastle it is safe to take the time to gather what we need before we leave rather than raid the ship once we make the ice well the answer lies with 
answer lies with the captain. To remove the ship this week? Uh, not yet. Very well. When we remove the boiler from the furnace, that is when we make our move. When you feel we are ready to go, we just get a boiler move, uh, boiler room, and give the order. Wait, it's spoiled. stands before the furnace staring at the boiler with intent. Are you tearing it out, Captain? I think we'll be holding off for now. I understood. When you stop, when you stop thinking about it, let me know. I'll rip this boiler out myself. Yeah, but I want to feed some coal. Abandoned ship. Captain, news from a scout north. We discovered two penguin spots, Emperor and Adele Adele, respectively. Also discovered a spot where the crab eater seals gather. They're marked on the map if you wish to send out a hunting party. Uh, news from the east. Crab eater seals and emperor penguins both gathering in the areas. The marks on the map to which you send out a hunting party. Captain, we try to use the radius to pick up any signals every evening from the past week. Nothing will take it, afraid not. As we expected. I have to say that I expected worse reaction from the sailors. I suppose they're gonna leave trying a method and knowing it not to be unsuccessful. Now they can move on with the next venture. With a uh, little reservation. There are sorts of people, I must say. Well, I suppose anything that puts the crew's mind at ease is worth doing. Thank you, Mr. Glossley. Uh, Captain. My dogs appear to be struggling in on uh, deck kennels. They require a more secure form of shelter from the environment. Uh, Doglows, I believe they are called. Yes, I will require some hands to work on constructing them. It is for the health and safety of the pack. Um, I put some uh, of the crew to work on it. Yes, I am. Yep. Yes, I know. We need to keep them alive. Uh, Junior, Shaw, sure. it's safe to say we've been out there longer than anticipated. We're going to have to organize the rations we have. Find what expires first. That way, we won't be letting anything go to waste. Long process though, could use a hand or two to help, if you can assign them to the pantry. I already did. The uh, mass was damaged when the ship was being tossed uh, a, while, uh, a while back, Captain. Uh, best to get someone to fix it before the temperance is freed. 
Creed. Hey, ship could come loose any moment. Heading off to repair the mass is a dangerous task. We don't even know if the ship will, will sail if the ice clears. Would be worth it though. Uh, would be worth the risk, I guess. Uh, let's see. We're gonna be sending um, uh, her up. Anyone that is rope savvy. I was summoned by Mr. Templeton. Yes, Mr. Isaac, there is a regard of your personal item. What do you mean? I felt it pertinent to let the captain know what your care that you're carrying a weapon. Excuse me? Perhaps this is my unfamiliarity with expeditions, but I was surprised others did not bring any item to protect themselves. Many of the crew cannot afford to an item to themselves. Captain, it is up to you on what we should do with this revolver. With all due respect, this is my personal item, Captain. It is the captain's right to rec requisition any weapon on the ship that includes your own. Uh, that weapon will be more useful in the hands of Cordell for the hunts. Very well, Captain. I understand. We would do well to avoid creating an imbalance of power among the crew. I doubt the sailor would take too kindly to such a thing. Sean, there is a rumor going around among the crew. They're saying the ship is haunted by the ghost of Captain Hunt. What a ridiculous tribe. Hey, though, you want to, you want to put a stop to it. Absolutely, we can't allow rumors like that to run rampant. They are just stories. I see no harm in them. Wait until they spread. How many would you like to be on the temperance after that? There is hope they won't go too far. Uh, Heather the boiler when you wish to abandon ship. I suggest we do it sooner rather than uh, later. Yeah, yeah. If you say so. Abandoned ship, then I guess. I should just do this. And I swear, when that hook came swing, Captain Hunt had to pull me down. This was five, six years ago. I had no clue what I was doing, but Bodo was nearly lost an eye that day. The same expedition, Ward lost his arm. After the time, I, I don't think Hunt knew what he was doing either. He was quite an interesting man. Hey, he is. Do you need something? I heard stories about Hunt and I was curious. I'd like to know more about the man. Uh, didn't you get your feel while he was here, eh? Hey? Where is about to vote, aren't ya? Oh, is that it, Sean? I don't care about that, I'm generally checking in. How are you now? Alright, let's leave it at that grimly. Nice to check in, Sean, but I think you can sign a crew call at the night. Grimly walks off. Uh, this crew was awfully fond of Hunt. Is a word of uh, a word to the wise Robin. I have nothing against you, but we sure don't know you either. It's going to take more than simple pleasantries to earn Grimly's trust. Yeah, if you say so. 
Well, let's just rip it out then. It's... Yeah, abandoned ship. I cannot put him in. We are heading out then. Best tell the lands. We're moving out? Yes, captain's orders. For now we should focus on setting a campsite on the ice. Leave uh, the equipment holding for later? No worries, I get the team to work. We have a camp set up before you know it. Uh, you're taking that with you? I can't go a day without it, can you? Oh, the crew like the music. Fair enough. You better get a holding then. Lifeboats next. They're a bit more important than that accordion. Hey, I know. Uh. Come, Stanberry, we are simply moving to the ice. Yes, yes, it's very it's all very exciting. The rest of you if the rest of you behave yourself, you'll be all treated an extra helping of soup. Well, there we have it. The heart of the ship ripped clean from her chest. But still it beats for the crew. How long uh, were you waiting on that one? Well, because it was uh, shite. No time for poetry. Captain, let's get this bloody furnace set up on the ice. last chance to get a shot like this isn't that dangerous don't worry i've done it before don't tell the captain okay there yeah, perfect oh well temperance captain i hope you're lodging are to your comfort if not i'm afraid you will have to power through until rescue we say goodbye to temperance but our work is far from over uh, nothing to protect us from the ice now uh, rescuing equipment from the ship is our chief priority captain without the furnace the temperance is quite literally dead in the water three weeks at most before it goes under Food and coal, coal seems most important. Indeed, we should retrieve as much as we can from the pantry before it spoils. From there, we'll have to rely on wildlife. Regardless, we need our wits about us. We stand alone against the ice now. pocket. What does it matter to you? Hunched over, clutching something, it's suspicious. I'm holding an egg. An egg? Why? Keep my hands warm. Boiled egg keep, keeps heat. That is like a rather ingenious. We knew the cold better than you a lot anyway. It seems you no longer need to find a path through the ice. Uh, and now we focus on finding a safe path to land. No rescue ship will find us out here, nor will this ice hold the full year. 
make it so then. Uh, my dogs have been restless all evening. The moves that I is proving overstimulating. They will sit it down eventually. It was good to hear the sailor. Uh, the sailors recover from their wounds. If nothing else, we'll take solace in avoiding life being lost uh, today. Captain, if you find yourself stricken with boredom, I do have a book uh, I would recommend. A textbook on different case uh, classes of wildflowers. Uh, the topic is more interesting than it may seem, I assure you. I will enjoy that temple tone. I will be sure to bring it to you when I have the chance then. Yeah, let's just pass the evening. Oh, someone has food poisoning. Uh, that young woman, Kasha. The flash of a camera started my dog several times now. He's growing tiresome. If it proves a great distraction, let me know. Yes, I doubt your word would be enough to stop her. That camera is her sole purpose out here. As much as uh, an annoying it can be, it would not be right to rob her of that. I was not going to take it away, just tell her to stop a little bit. Sure. We want to survive. We want to survive out here. We'll need wood. Can be burned for fuel or to repair the lifeboats. That's the only one source of wood out here. One source of wood here on the ice stoke. Are you suggesting we strip down the temperance before it goes under? Ship isn't surviving either way. Put the furnace out, only a matter of time before it goes under. We should strip it down for all we can. Of course, you need to strip any room clean before you can tear it apart. If we have time, it is certainly something to consider. Ah, uh, if you salvage any... If you salvage any, can be feather the furnace or brought to me for boat repairs. Captain, you should take a look into the tool room on the temperance. The equipment in there is, ne is a necessity for life on the li on the ice. Without the appro appropriate tools, there is only so far sheer manpower uh, can take us. Exactly. Be best uh, act quick, uh, Captain. The tempers won't stay steady forever. Uh, I suggest you prioritize raiding the weapons room on the lower deck. The guns and the flares will prove uh, a great boon to hunting. They are certainly a necessity in an emergency. Indeed, it is best to be sold before the lower deck flood floods. So you should send someone to save the food from the pantry. We need all the food supplies we can get on our, our hands on. That's true, hunting for game alone is an unreliable source. 
Just hurry up. It's likely to spoil if we let the food ship flood any further. Uh, Ken, the temperance life is short, but we're in luck. The lower decks are uh, flooding quick, but that's fine. The coal is still useful. We should grab as much as we can before she goes under. Agreed. Uh, yeah, okay. They will need it. So I was investigating the tin food we picked up from the temperance. I should have expected this, but the tins were spoiled in the flooding. Is it still edible? Are you serious? Uh, can't be, I don't know what it says. There's something about food poisoning. Are they still certain? Well, it's certain, uh, it certainly is to taste like death, but it may still be edible. The may in the sense is not so comforting. Food is food. But I'm not sure if it's worth the risk. What do you think, Shaw? Not worth the risk. I suppose we're better off avoiding that. One tin of peach is likely isn't worth the risk of poisoning. Uh, you will, uh, yeah, what about the journalist? Uh, Hunt allowed for the photographer with no sailing experience to tail alongside for this expedition. As it stands, Kasha Belfort's record is what will stand the test of time when the expedition is spoken of. And it would seem that she has not made allies of the crew. Hey, Kasha, she doesn't seem the type to make enemies. Not uh, with purpose or malice, Captain. The sailor of this crew are a private lot. They do not take kindly the prying eyes of a land lover, or as they would say. Remember, Captain, she controls the story. She controls your story. Best have a word. Yeah, I will in a moment. I'll see what I can do. You and two John's charge in the room is full of weapons, flares, and explosives. With the water flooding in from behind, you have time to grab two items. Um, and then let's go with the flares. And um, uh, we're going with the bolt action. That was it.
Uh, you and Tash are charging into the room, which is full of food and ale. With the water floating, in, you grab the grab one item. Okay. Uh, ale cakes. Let's go for it. That will keep people in good spirits. The engineers hold tools. You and Gnome's charge in the room is full of various tools and speci specialist equipment. Uh, you have time to grab two items. Okay. Medical tools, digging tools, engineering tools. Increase the capacity of either the hooshpot or the furnace. Carpentry. Easy to extract timber and use it for repairs. Digging. Uh, see more than one patient at a time. Yeah, we're gonna go with medical. And um, I think uh, we'll go with the uh, carpentry. There's nothing in science old. As far as I can see. And there's nothing here too. Three for that. I cannot build it now. As she passes by, you see Cash adjusting a camera as she stands, partially obscured as she finds the right angle for shots. As she steps to her side, she raises her head and looks to you. Um, do you ever stop taking pictures? It is the reason I'm here, not much point if I don't uh, chronicle everything. I didn't win the Fenter Prize through inaction. I'm certain, uh, I'm sure many of them have stories to tell. I'm certain you could uh, get some f uh, good stories from Kurt. As she looks to you. Yes, I suppose so. I'm sure it's plenty to spare. For now, though, I think I'm better off in the background taking pictures from a distance. Do you dislike, uh, dislike Kurt? Not at all. Don't, I don't dislike Kurt. It's simply that I followed Kurt's expedition a lot as a child. So seeing in person is odd. So you're simply starstruck. I wouldn't put it that way. There's a common uh, adage uh, you have, uh, you may have heard. Never meet your heroes. I'd like to avoid becoming one of those uh, one who repeats that adage. So you're worried about being disappointed? No, uh, should I be? It's more that uh, up until now. It's more that... Uh, it's more that up until now, he's been on a, an idea. 
Doesn't that make any sense? Not really. Oh, well, uh, I'll let you know when I figure it out. out. I'll leave you be. Uh, you get your photo snap, but I'm a photographer too? I... She's a landlubber for sure. Treating us like we're some novelty. I don't have much, pro much problem with it. Good conversation, at least. I'd rather let's get a conversation out here. Crew member approached you during dinner. Captain, you look like you could use some more to eat. Taking up the responsibility of captain is not admirable as it is inevitable. Inevitable. Please help yourself with some of my own rations, frankly. I'm stuffed. Thank you, but there's no need. Oh, well, the offer is always there. Uh, York the third returns to their seated position as others in the crew look at them with annoyed expressions. It will appear their attempts to gratify the command uh, was unsuccessful. Oh no. Evening. Before they go, Grimley and I stopped into. Stopped into a greasy spoon in the city. The sausage and eggs were perfect. Best I've ever had. Now I'm trying to remember it, its damn name. It left my head. It was likable by the dogs. Just look around when we return. You'll find it. If it's still there when we return. Who knows when we'll be back. They could have closed down or fired a chef by then. Uh, take it easy. We're doing fine. We'll do fine. Uh, doctor, how you're holding up? Still find yourself with uh, bouts of sickness? No, no, that isn't a problem. It was only seasickness. Now that we're no longer at sea, my stomach is settled. For the most part. If you ever feel the queasiness set into once more, I'll learn an old trick in my travels. Simply close your eyes and count backward from ten. It worked uh, me in a treat in my youth. <laughs> right, I'll try that. Yeah, I don't think that works, does it? going under well she is gone and there we go that is the demo. Well, um, I really like that one. Yeah, this is definitely something I will keep an eye on for its full release. I like games like this. It should be about surviving. You have to manage a bit. You have to scavenge a bit. I like that. It's fun. Especially also if it has a good story tied to it. It reminds me a lot about uh, Frostpunk. Uh, but then again, Frostpunk doesn't really have a story, in my opinion. Not a, a fabricated story like this. With many characters. So... Uh, 
Frostpunk only have like a scenario. And that's the story. So yeah, I really like this one. Um, it was really nice. Wait, there were voices? I don't remember it where... I don't know. I didn't hear any voice acting. 